Hello, I'm Reverend Mary Johnson, a retired United Methodist pastor living in Carrollton, Virginia. I thank Diane for inviting me to speak with you all today about what it means for me to be transgender. Because every life is unique, my story is unique to me. If you have met one transgendered person, then you have met just one transgendered person. And being transgender is only one aspect of who I am. I was born during a time when the gender binary was being strongly enforced. In our culture, we enforce the idea of two genders. All cultures have not always been this way. Judaism has eight genders, just as many other cultures have different amounts of, of gendering of people. In the United States, Facebook lists 58 genders. Binary thinking, though, makes people seem invisible because their uniqueness is, is taken away from them. In the 1950s, I was born in this very binary world. So the doctor who made that initial diagnosis of male had only two choices to make. And it seems that my little penis was long enough to qualify for malehood. Gender is not determined by any one factor alone. The mystery of gender is a, a mosaic of many factors. Just having a functioning SRY gene on an Y chromosome is only just one of those factors, not all of them. I developed as a transgender child while I was in my mother's womb. The part of my brain that gives me a sense of myself gave me a, a feminine understanding of myself. Some preliminary studies have looked at the, the brains of, of transgender women and compared them to cisgendered women and found that they're very similar. And then when comparing them to uh, cisgendered men, they find that they're very dissimilar. So at birth, I was given the legal gender of male with an expectation of assuming a, a male gendered role. My parents gave me the expected gender markers, like making sure my hair was short and giving me male clothing and boy toys to play with, like a Tommy gun. As I grew up, I was expected to uh, protect my mother and sister and siblings when my father went away to Korea and then later to Vietnam. But this gender was not my choice and was not requested. And in my soul, in the very core of my being, it has always been questioned. You see, I have always been a trans female, even before I understood what that meant, even before I had the, the word transgender in my vocabulary. See, I was, I was different. I did not fit in with, with boys as hard as I tried to mimic their behavior. It just wasn't me. And I did not fit in with the girls, no matter how much I wished to because they didn't see me as one of them. It was a dangerous and a very isolating time of life. 
many transgender children don't survive because of the bullying. Too many trans children commit suicide and too many transgender kids end up homeless when their family just can't deal with it. Too many transgender children are exploited by adults for fun and profit as they just try to survive. When I was growing up, trans people were placed into mental hospitals and they received shock treatments and they received frontal lobotomies and they were administered drugs all in the attempts to change them to what someone else saw as their proper gender. We now know that conversion therapies have never worked. And in fact, they are seen as forms of torture. I survived, I think, because I was brought up in a military family that moved around a lot. I went to a different school at least every year, sometimes two schools a year. I survived because my parents loved me and because they had me in church, which created for me a loving community that would at least accept a, an awkward child. I survived because of the idea that many had while I was growing up that Jesus was coming back soon and I had this hope that I would get out of this mess soon. To survive, I suppress and I repress my femininity as much as possible, or I tried to find creative ways to express who I really was. Being gender dys dysphoric means that you live with this continual sense of unease in your life. Some have described it as like wearing your shoes on the wrong foot all the time or, or wearing your shirt on backwards. It just feels awkward. It just feels like something isn't right. For me, getting my hair cut was torture. And so I found myself having a mantra that always told myself that it would grow back, that somehow it would grow back. The clothes that I was forced to wear never seemed to fit right, at least in my own ideas. They felt ugly. They never seemed to be what I would like. It was depressing. Male shoes made me always feel like Frankenstein. They always just seemed clunky. There was a, a short period of life when in the mid, uh, the early 70s, when I got to wear platform shoes and wonderful bell-bottom pants, and I was allowed to to grow my hair out long. But unfortunately, this was just for a very short period of time. As I developed uh, in my home, I, I took on female roles. I have always loved to cook. And I used to cook Sunday dinner for my family as I was growing up. I have always done child care, starting as a babysitter. I, I loved taking care of children. And I loved babies. And when I had my own children, my own babies went with me as I went off to preach on a Sunday morning. And I happened to be the one who did all the sewing in our home. I persevered as a female identified male until I reached the ripe old age of 55. 
this is not unusual for people born when I was. By this time, I had been married for almost 40 years. I had two grown sons. And I had come to the conclusion that I did not want to die without anyone ever really seeing me and never really knowing who I was. Unlike what politicians might tell you, to transition takes a great deal of soul searching. The struggle is between what everyone has always been telling you about yourself and then figuring out who you really are. It is a very holy and sacred journey. But once you know there's no turning back because now your whole life makes sense for the first time. And you feel the, the full force of the error made at the very start of your life by those who made some wrong assumptions about who you were. The first person I told was my beloved wife with fear and trembling. And she was at first shocked and tried to ignore it all. Later, she said after thinking about it, that I always seemed to have this hidden part of my life. And now she was excited to see what it was. Now, trans cis marriages have about a 50-50 survival rate, which really isn't that much different from everybody else's. But I count myself fortunate because I've been able to continue to be married to this wonderful woman. When I told her, I, at that point, really wasn't sure what that really going to mean for my life or where that was going to go. There was a lot of unknown. She now knew now knows that uh, her husband was really the wife that she never knew she wanted. I then went to counseling. It always takes some counseling to better understand this revelation and what I could do with it. I turned out to be just a very normal trans woman. Nothing extraordinary, just me. I was sent to an endocrinologist who prescribed hormones. And I never felt so whole in all of my life. And this isn't really something special about estrogen. It's just special about estrogen in me. Because when you hear the stories about uh, trans men and their ability and their opportunity to take testosterone, which for me was poison, uh, they feel the same way. They feel whole for the first time in their life. No matter what politicians might tell you, children cannot take hormones. Children cannot have surgery. It just doesn't happen. It's against the law. It's against normal medical procedures. And there are a lot of them. Hormone blockers are not something that's brand new. They have been prescribed to children for decades when there have been hormonal problems. But for trans kids, they are lifesavers. They help children survive puberty while they wait until they are old enough to be able to be prescribed the proper hormones for their gender, allowing their bodies to develop properly. You see, the changes caused by what I said, what I call testosterone poisoning, scars you for life. It takes many surgeries to correct. It takes thousands and thousands of dollars to correct. <clears throat> the blockers allow trans youth 
to grow into the body that corresponds to their gender. Now, not everybody has the same surgeries and not everybody has any surgery at all. Uh, this is because of many reasons, some of them very personal and some of them are financial. But trans people have always been very creative in seeking to see themselves and to portray themselves so other people can see them. And that's even before all the modern um, medical breakthroughs that have made things even better. It has been over a decade and I am still in the process of trans uh, transitioning. I am in the, the midst of my bureaucratic transition. In process, there's my federal identity, uh, my corrected birth certificate. Next, I have the joys of making name changes throughout the system uh, that surrounds my life. Nobody transitions lightly. No matter what politicians try to tell you, where it comes and just makes a spare of the moment decision. It takes years to unravel all the things that other people have done so you can be who you are. There is no greater joy than being seen. Because most of my life, I have been invisible. Others have only seen what they wanted to see or what they were told to expect to see. But now people are starting to see me, who I really am. I believe that binary thinking is not healthy for anyone. It's simplistic thinking. It, it shuts out the, the greater reality. I believe that it is part of the basis for the sins of racism, which is a, usually a binary, sexism that's a part of the binary, and a plethora of other ways in which we have segregated out people because of some minutia. If you are interested in, in saving a life, Believe a child who has the courage to trust you enough to share with you who they are. Oftentimes for children, it takes only one believing adult to give them the courage to stay alive. If you want to protect a life, protect the identity of people who are at risk. Never out a trans person without their permission. When people are outed, they are often at a risk for violence. Sometimes that violence is deadly, as we have observed today. When I came out, it was an international event because of whom I am married to. But I am thankful that I had a little control over when and how my gender was disclosed to the entire world. If you want to be compassionate, make a space for people to care for their bodily needs. Trans people are not predators. They are the ones who are most likely to be attacked just for going to the restroom. They just need to live their lives just like every other human being. Today, we remember those who just in this past year have lost their lives for the crime of not being who others thought they should be. May those who love them 
find comfort in their deep sorrow. Thank you for the privilege of, of sharing with you a little bit of my journey. May it help humanize a part of our society that is being used as a political target. Thank you all.